And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at the great city of Rome. Oh, that sounds great. The great city of Rome. Rome is, was a great city for sure. And in this game, you are one of the people building a city. City building is obviously all the rage right now. A lot of games based about it. In this one, you're building a four by four city grid. Let's take a closer look at how it works. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a couple cards here that we're going to start your grid out. You're going to have a 4x4 four four grid. It doesn't matter, you know, if when you add new cards where they go in the grid. But once you have that 4x4 four four boundary uh, settled, it's going to be the way it is. So you start with two cards in your grid, but you're going to be trying to get more of those as the game goes by. You're going to have stacks in the play here. So if you're playing with less than four players, you'd only have three stacks. One player is chosen to go first. At the beginning of each round, you'll turn over the top card in each stack. And these cards are going to be different buildings that you're going to be able to put into your city and grid. Now, each of these buildings is going to require a certain number of bricks to build it. So you'll have some, you know, you can put them in your hand and wait till you have enough things to build them. And they also are going to give you various things. For example, this is an aqueduct. At the end of the game, you're going to get points for how many aqueducts you have in your city. So hey, if you have all, if you have four aqueducts in your city at the end of the game, you're going to get 40 points. Uh, some of them turn into production things. Uh, that will give you benefits. Others are going to give you, like this one, when you place it down, you're going to get cards in your hand. You'll be able to draw cards and things. So, And then others are going to give you stars here, which are going to basically give you a sort of a fame to your city. And also, if I have at least one residential area that's four points, that, that, that's size four, at the end of the game, I'll get five points. I'm not going to go over every uh, building in there. In fact, that the rules come with a whole little extra rules packet that explains what all the buildings do. But the way the base game works is starting with the start player, each player is going to pick a spot on here, on this, this strip. Now at the beginning of the round, what you'll do is you'll take the top strip, flip it over, and put it underneath. So the strips here are going to be changing, but you're going to see that as you build these strips, there's always going to be three bricks on them and two cogs. So whoever's closest to this gold piece here is going to go first each round. Now going first is great because you pick which of these cards you'll take. Going last you get whatever is left over. However, you only get the uh, items that are from where you are to the gold piece. So the brown player is only going to get one brick and you can't save bricks, you have to spend it this turn. So they're only going to be able to build a building that costs one brick or they can always pay two coins per brick that they're missing, but coins can be kind of difficult to get a hold of. See, the white player has two bricks, the orange player has one cog and two bricks, and the purple player has three bricks and two cogs. So bricks are used on your turn. You may build one building and put it into your city. If you have two cogs, you can run all your machines or all your industry that's in your city. And so this one here, for example, two cogs gives me a coin. Two cogs here gives me a star. Uh, so you're, you can run those. If you're missing a cog and you only have one cog, you can pay a coin for each missing cog that you have. If you have no cogs, I guess you could pay two coins to run your machines. But you better have a lot of them in your city. So that's basically it. Each player is going to build something and then run their machines if they can and depending on what they have here. And then we're going to flip this. A uh, new player is the first player. We'll draw four more cards up here and continue on. Players will be slowly adding these cards to their hand. Now in stack one, every so few cards are often, one of these cards is going to show up, which are victory point cards. This is going to go to whichever player happens to have the most stars at this point in time. That player must discard all their stars, and then they get to keep this card, which is going to be worth points at the end of the game. 3, 6, 10, and 14. And all the buildings in this deck will be providing you with stars as you take them. Now, other than that, 
There's all sorts of rules in the game about the buildings. Like aqueducts, as I said, can give you four points for 40, but each aqueduct has to go in a different row and or column. There's a lot of different colored buildings, which are going to give you points for residential things that they are touching, your residential areas. Uh, if they are next to different colors, will score you points. And like I said, there's a lot of different ways to score points. Each of your residential areas is going to score points for the different colored areas that they're next to. Your aqueducts, your temples will score you points. You're going to get one point for each money that you have at the end of the game. One point for every leftover two stars. If you got those star cards and you add those together and whoever has the most points wins. So the game's going to take place over uh, certain, uh, 14 different rounds. Uh, so 14 cards plus the two cards you started with makes that 16 grid. And you'll just score up your grid by the different buildings that are in it. Most points is the winner. Now this game comes with a really great insert here. You can put your one, two, three, four cards in here, other cards, the pawns. I'm not a real big fan of, you know, using these little trays here to keep your coins because they're really hard to get into, but they're there. Some extra victory point tokens, which are used for some of the buildings. So everything fits nicely in here. The game looks okay. I will say though that as much as I love, okay, so if we zoom all the way up like this and I look at this, this looks great. On the background of this, you know, white or this or the yellow, it just doesn't look like when I'm building my city. So I put these three buildings next to each other. Mm, it doesn't look really good. It looks okay. It looks stark, I guess is the word. It doesn't have the feeling of like a flowing city. Then you couple that with the, uh, what are these buildings mean? You know, uh-huh, huh? Symbol, 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 symbol. There is symbology all throughout this game. And you will, especially for your first few games, constantly be looking in here. What does this mean? I mean, some of them are obvious, the temples and stuff, but the different colors, you'll be looking them up. Not to mention the scoring for residential buildings isn't really, it's only really located here on the books themselves. I mean, in the rule book itself. So I found the symbology of the game to be, I mean, just a little confusing. Uh, like I said, you'll get used to it after a couple games. But the fact is, is the game itself really looks bland on the table. This device here is a really interesting idea, but these boards are just variations of three bricks and two cogs. That, I mean, that's, I know that they need that for variety in the game, but it certainly doesn't look fantastic. This game does not have a strong table presence. Uh, it's and it, when it comes down to it, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're building a city based on components. It just feels like a bunch of mechanisms thrown in a box. All right, well there you have it, the great city of Rome. So when it comes down to it, I was very interested in this game because Matthew Dunson and Brett Gilbert do some really great stuff, and I like their games. This game is okay. I know that's not a ringing endorsement, but that's just really what the game is. It's fine. I just worry that the game is fairly forgettable. I already mentioned that there's some problems I have with the iconography and that the game just doesn't look that exciting. And at this point in gaming, games need to look exciting. They do. I need to go and look at a game and think, okay, you know, and, and we were actually talking about this the other day in the Dice Tower headquarters because we had several games about building cities in ancient Rome. There were several of them, and some of them are designed by fantastic designers. I would say that these guys are fantastic designers. And there was one that had a bunch of Euro mechanisms like they all do, but it, it just looked great. That's the kind of game I want. Now, you say, Vassal, get over yourself. Who cares how the game looks? What are about the mechanisms? And that's where, that's the thing is, I mean, the mechanisms can elevate themselves over the game like, eh, it's okay, but the mechanisms are fantastic. They're, again, they're okay. I love that strip in the middle, putting down the figure. The closer you are to the front, the better thing you get. The farther back, the more resources. That's a neat concept. But it's not as interesting because it's bricks and cogs. You're like, ooh, I got two bricks. I guess I have to pay two coins to get the third brick. I only wanted two bricks. Or I got the two cogs, I can run my one, two, maybe three different machineries in the thing. It never felt like it just really cool engine. And then there's always a pausing as we sit there and go, okay, who gets what building? I'm going to take this building. How does this building work? Where do I put it in my grid? And it just felt very dry and mechanical, like I'm doing this, I'm getting this. I love that thing in the middle. Again, it's a neat thing. And I would love to see that expanded upon, like all sorts of different resources on it. And, and then I sit there and go, ooh, I want to go closer to the front, but then I get fewer things farther back. And it's a really great concept. It just doesn't pan out in this game, I think, to be as fascinating as it is. And yet I don't dislike the great city of Rome, the game, uh, because 
it is interesting building there and I and each building I say well I take this temple and I like the star aspect as buildings give you stars and you want to get those because you can turn them in and get those cards which are frankly worth a lot of points but at the end of the day I worry that in a year no one will remember what this game is even about because it doesn't feel like it's about Rome it feels like you're putting point cards in a 4x4 grid at the end of the day it feels the mechanisms shine out beyond the theme, which again may not be a bad thing if they're fantastic, but in this case, they're just merely a little interesting. So, yeah, I know it's not a ringing endorsement for the game, but I want to be really clear, I'm not disliking on the game either. If you said, Tom, we're playing the great city of Rome, I'd be like, all right, cool. And it's not a long game. It says 60 minutes in the box, but I really think you can crank it out in 45, unless someone's really taking their time. And has a great insert, and. Like I said, the cards kind of have an interesting way of working together as you build residences, but this is a crowded genre. There's a lot of city building games out there right now. This is not one of the best ones out right now. So I would just call this the decent city of Rome. Dice Tower Judgment? Yeah, it's decent.